Hi! Hey, Drew! Look at this happening. <laughs> Look at your coffee mug. Look at it. Your Yeetai. Look at it. Which he knows is pronounced Yeti. We got a couple of YouTube comments last time we were together. <laughs> He was joking, and I went along with it, I guess. Yeah, People you, took you, that as, you really think I said you time? Like, because I don't know what the, Anyway. How is the mug now? It's, now it's, that you've been using it's it for fine. I, uh, mm -hmm. I was in Jiffy Lube the other day, and I dropped it. And this super sweet, removable magnetic slide thing uh -huh. flew right off as soon as I dropped it. Just went, nice. Pew, and nice. coffee all over the ground. So. Oh. Got those old Jiffy Lube brown paper towels, took care of business there. <laughs> the ones and that don't absorb And also anything. it dented at the bottom, so I had to oh, take, yeah. a, take a hammer and just kind of... Wow. Pound it out a little bit. But it could take it, right? Yeah! It took the abuse. It's a Yeetai. Of course it could take it. You know what doesn't spill anything <laughs> when you drop it, Drew, is a Contigo. And I can tell you have dropped that one a few <laughs> I times. I have dropped it a few times. <laughs> well, you know. Uh, but that's not why we're here. No. We're here to talk about an actual topic today. Um, one that we've long been asked about. And, and you just mentioned, I can't believe we haven't talked about this. And I swear we have, but I guess we haven't. We talked about it like casually here and there and like right in like Q&A. Yeah. And, and I guess we things. talked about it a lot personally probably. Yeah, but um, the topic is gold versus steel nibs. This comes up a lot. Um, I feel like this is something that was really, really hot like years ago. Um, it's less... Um, hotly debated yeah. now, and it's more just incurious because people see the price differences between, you know, gold and steel pens, and yeah. they're like, "What's going on here?" I feel like fewer people are like, "Which one is better now?" Because it, yeah. it's more or less understood that neither is better; they're just different for different purposes. So I don't, I don't think that there's a, uh, you know, no one's seeking to win the battle anymore. Sure, sure, which I makes think, sense. Yeah, I think like decades ago, the price of gold was much lower. The quality of steel was maybe not quite as refined. Right. So there was a little bit more of a debate about, okay, why would you get a steel nib if you can get a gold? The, the prices were, were not as far from each other. Nowadays, the price of gold is much, much higher. And modern steel is much, much better. It is. So it's uh, much much finer differences. I would I, I kind of equate sure. it to like a fine wine or like, you know, if you're getting like a $50 steak versus like a $10 steak, like there's going to be a difference. But if you just want a steak, oh, like yeah. you can get a ten dollar steak, like that Texas Roadhouse steak. I've had many ten dollar steaks. Steakhouse is gonna get it done, <laughs> yeah. you know? Or those nice two dimensional Waffle House steaks. It's like steak paper. <laughs> you know some Waffle House yeah. steaks too. Um, yeah. So, so there there is a difference to be made, but it's not necessarily like oh, steel is crap, gold is what you should always right. go for. Well, let's talk about it. So, what okay. is the deal? Like, what what uh, do you want to cover? Uh, steel nibs first. Yeah, let's talk about steel nibs. So, um, you know, most modern steel nibs, with the exception of like really, really, really like inexpensive ones coming out of you know China or something like that that are like a dollar or two. Right, right. Those maybe are kind of speculative, but most other steel nibs are fairly reliable, fairly predictable, and you kind of know what you're getting. And there's going to be some differences in the way they write from one to another, but largely you're going to get a relatively stiff nib. You're going to get a pretty consistent flow. It's not often going to be like a completely gushing wet flow. Yeah. Um, and there's not going to be a lot of spring to it. It's going to be you know kind of a nail, as right. they call them, just a really stiff nib. You know what I think, and this is, I like a, a more bouncy nib every now and then, yeah, which is okay. what you would normally get for gold, but for, for steel, I feel like if I don't want to worry about um, whether or not I'm putting too much or too little pressure, mm -hmm. I like going with a steel nib. <laughs> yeah. And I was thinking about that this morning, I'm Absolutely. like, you know, what is a benefit of, of steel nibs? I came up with this cool analogy, all right? So, Ooh. if you play video games, and if you grew up around where I grew up, you didn't have joysticks, you just had... An up, down, left, and right D-pad, okay. okay? That's okay. a steel nib. Steel nib's a D-pad. Yours up, down, left, right, and that's it. It's either going or it's not going. With a gold nib or a palladium nib or something with a little bit more bounce to it, that's one of those joysticks. You can go a mm. little bit or all the way. Okay. And sometimes you just don't want to worry about that. Mm. Sometimes you just want to go up, down, left, right. And I appreciate that because sometimes it's just not... How much pressure I'm putting down is not something I want to think about. That's right. And if you're playing like Super Mario Smash Brothers or whatever, and you're just mashing buttons, you have no idea what you're doing, you don't necessarily Ex want like a really fine control. You're just... Exactly. Ah! Exactly. That's how I play. Yeah, which is, which is if you're starting off, then that's uh, exactly. so a steel nib is the right choice for you then. Yeah, I always recommend steel nibs first. You yeah. know, just, you know, the price of gold and, you know, again, the fact that you probably aren't going to necessarily be able to pick up on the differences if you have never used it before you're yeah. gonna just going from any other rollerball or ballpoint to any fountain pen is immediately gonna feel better yeah because it's a superior writing experience and you don't have to put down Not pressure. That we're biased. yeah and you don't have to put a lot of pressure and most people tend to write too hard 
with a fountain pen, they write with too much pressure because they're used to having to scribble those ball points around. You don't have to do that with fountain pens. So steel's always the way to start off. And we've got a few of our favorite steel nibs mm -hmm. right here. Yeah. And I wanted to mention this one first because we're talking about bounce. Yeah. And the Diplomat Magnum has a little bit of bounce it to it. It does have some bounce. So good thing you brought up the one exception to the rule. We'll, we'll as get the it first pen. We'll to get show it out of the way. We'll way get it go. out of the way. <laughs> um, this one is the exception to the rule. Brian is correct, and it's got a really neat nib. And if you did want something, I mean, this might be a good second steel nib. Um, if you did want something that's going to provide you with a little bit more of a bounce, this one does. Watch this. Whoop. Oh yeah, it's it got it. it's got a surprising amount of spring to it. Mm -hmm. And uh, this pen has been around for 40 years, which I continue to talk about because I'm continued to be surprised that, that still blows my mind. it's been around this long yeah. and we are just finding out about it. So let's start where I should have started off with. Yeah, um, some kind of staple Probably starter these pens. Two. Lamy, Pilot, um, you know, Twisby. These are all brands that are pretty well known within the pen community. I'd say being... these two are probably like the most iconic entry level fountain pens. Yeah. I mean maybe the Safari yeah. instead of the All Star. Right, right, right. That's just the one that you grabbed. <clears throat> sure. Um but same nib because it's both pretty. Along. Yeah, I do love that blue. Mm -hmm. Um but yeah, reliable writers, consistent flow. They're just all around really great. And they're and affordable and accessible. Absolutely. Um, if you go a little bit higher, you know, you get into the Twisbees and stuff like that. Twisbees have great writing experience as well. Um, their nib sizes tend to be a little different across the different models, but great writing experience. And alongside that, both, uh, um, these are a lot of our favorite, not just pens, but steel nibs to write with as yeah. well. And uh, the Diplomat is going to have a Yovo nib, mm -hmm. which overall as far as steel nibs go mm -hmm. the quality control that this company puts out on their steel nibs is unparalleled it's phenomenal it is really really something else and you can get yovo nibs on a bunch of different pens not mm -hmm. just diplomat yep. edison there we go for yovo nibs as well our goulet nibs are yovo nibs twisby's got yovo nibs there's a lot of uh, uh Kaweco even has a uh, yovo nibs so a lot of brands have moved over to yovo in recent years um, Yovo, Yovo and Bach are the two major German manufacturers. Um, there's a lot of manufacturers that make their own, like Pilot, Lamy, Aurora, um, but the ones that are made from you know more specialty nib companies, um, Yovo is certainly one that we. Uh, and they're just fantastic. Are big yeah. They're they're consistent. They always write the way they're supposed. Not always, but I mean, <clears throat> nothing's perfect, but. Man, I love writing. They're pretty, they're pretty. I get good. the opportunity. I'm excited. Yeah. So <coughs> we started out with some of the lower end, lower end pens. The last couple that we mentioned there, the Edison, the Diplomat, those are actually getting into a price range that start to cross okay. over into gold nib range, and that's where people are like, "Why would I get?" Yeah, this that's when the debate nib? happens. Yeah, that's where things start <clears throat> to get a little fuzzy. So let's talk a little bit about gold nibs. Um, so uh, gold nibs, in and of themselves are not necessarily better or worse than steel nibs. They're a little bit different. Largely the difference is going to be that gold is a softer material yeah. than steel. <clears throat> so when you're writing with a gold nib, if all else is equal, the gold nib will give a little bit of bend to it. Mm -hmm. I don't want to say flex because then people think line variation. Right. But it'll bend a little bit. It'll be a little springy, kind of like if you're driving, you know, or I guess if I, so I'm like a cyclist, right? Yeah. Like if you're riding a mountain bike and you have like no shocks on your bike, you're going to feel all those bumps mm -hmm. as you're riding. But if you have those shocks, it's going to be a smoother ride. Right. And that's different that's from gold nib to is. gold nib. Like a Yovo yeah. gold nib does not have the same amount of bounce that a Pilot gold nib does. Mm -hmm. So it's going to vary from gold nib to gold nib. They're not all the same. Absolutely. Um, and since we just finished off talking about Edison and Diplomat here, these three pens, specifically of the ones that we have, mm -hmm. are probably closer in line with that price point that the debate kind of does start to happen. Absolutely. So when should I go up to a gold nib? Yep. So these two really come to mind. I think these are like the Safari and or the Safari All Star and the Metropolitan mm -hmm. are great representatives of Lamy and Pilot's entry level pen. Yeah. These two are representative. Like the entry level gold. Yes, the, the next level pens from those yeah. same brands. And Pilot's actually got a <clears> bunch <throat> of them. I'm a fan of the Custom 74. It was my first gold nib pen. Yeah. So I'm a little partial. The Vanishing Point also gets oh, thrown man. right in there in the mix. The Vanishing Point is excellent. If yeah. you take notes or use your fountain pens more like I do, I don't journal, but I write with them a lot in short bursts. The Vanishing mm -hmm. Point is fantastic. It's a quick, great, quick jotter. This one I like as a little more of a long form pen. It's got some good spring to it. The Lamy 2000 actually is a relatively stiff gold nib. So right. that one doesn't actually feel like 
quite as much of the springy gold nib as what you would have on, say, the Custom 74. Right, and some of that might have to do with the size of the nib. Absolutely. But the Vanishing Point has a little bit of bounce to it, even mm -hmm. though it's a small nib as well. So a lot of it depends on the nib design and, and stuff like that. So that's why, in and of itself, you can't say gold is better than steel, because there's other factors involved. And then another one, another worthy mention here is the Pilot E95S, which has this integrated nib, which I'm a big fan. Yeah, and it's also pretty affordable as far as gold nibs go. Absolutely. And this one has a little spring to it as well. Yeah. Even a little bit of line variation. So it can vary as, you know, I find that the variation of the writing experience with gold nibs tends to be a little bit wider yeah. than with steel. Steel tends to be a little more consistent <clears throat> across pen models and things like that. Gold nibs, you tend to get more of a variety. So it just, it's... You're refining your palate, you're getting a different experience. Just like if you would have a fine wine, you're picking up finer notes in the wine as you get to the more expensive okay, ones. Okay. You know, you're picking up different experiences with some of these gold nibs. I can see that. Um, we got to mention real quick alternative materials. So not, not gold, not steel. Not gold or steel. There's not a lot of them. No. Um, but one of them that gets a lot of attention is Visconti's Palladium nib. Really, it's just another fine metal, another premium metal that really performs very similarly to gold. Right. So I would say for, you know, just the ease of things, just consider it like a gold nib. Right. Okay. Uh, and so it's going to be springy. It's going to have uh, wet flow, just like most gold nibs. And another outlier would be a titanium nib. Absolutely. And those still more bouncy. That one's kind of like in between. <clears throat> I find the titanium nibs to be a little toothier. They tend to they be... They are, but they but they bounce too. They're they like toothy and bouncy. Yeah, so titanium is kind of its, it's own weird, and the metal's deal. very thin too. It's a very strange nib. For Definitely sure. Definitely an outlier. And then, Drew, I know you're a fan of this one, the quill nib. God, I love the, it. On the, the um, Peniter, mm. the Grande Beleza. Um, definitely a worthy mention here. So um, these are a few of our favorites, ones that are worth taking a look. So hopefully this prompts you a little bit just to be thinking about, um, you know, what type of nib might be best for you. I think honestly, starting with the, the lower price ones is the best way to get into pens. If you find like, hey, I want to get to kind of that next level status, you can do that within steel nibs. But if you really want that spring, you, that's where gold nibs yeah. come into play. You should have one of these. <laughs> You may already if you're watching this yeah. video. <laughs> All right. So you can check out a lot of these on GoulaiPens.com. Be sure to comment, like, subscribe. Let us know your thoughts down on this video. Drew, thanks for being on. You're welcome, man. Brian. It's a pleasure. And I like that shirt, too. It's Thank a good you. color. Thank yeah. you. Well, it's way warmer than it should be right now. So. It is. It's going to be like 70 degrees today. And it was like, you know, zero degrees last week. I don't know. I don't know what to do. Everybody's going to get sick. <laughs> <But>. Everybody <laughs> well. is sick. Everybody, thanks for watching. Hand right on.